In order to live comfortably at habitable temperatures and complete research in the extreme conditions of space, the International Space Station is lined with multi-layer insulation. Multi-layer insulation is a thermal insulation material made up of many different materials, such as, but not limited to, Kevlar, aluminized mylar, and Dacron. These materials are stacked in thin layers and combines the properties of its layers to help the crew on the International Space Station. The problem that this material solves is that the temperature inside the station needs to be regulated, factoring all methods of heat transfer. While the crew must be kept out of the enormous amounts of radiation emitted by the sun. There are a few criteria that materials must pass in order to be sent into space. The first criteria is that the material must be lightweight so that we can minimize the amount of fuel needed to send a large object to space and back. The second criteria is that the material must be cost effective. There are many materials used throughout the testing, production, and execution stages of a mission, and the cost effectiveness of the material can determine whether or not it can be used. Another criteria is the dimensional stability. This means that the material must retain its structure when it's exposed to vacuums, extreme temperatures, and other factors in the environment of space. MLI consists of multiple layers of three main materials, a reflective metallized mylar on the outside of MLI, reflective layers of Kevlar placed within MLI, and Dacron fabric that is placed between the layers of mylar and Kevlar to alternate between metallized and non-metallized layers and prevent thermal conduction. Kevlar is simply a strong plastic and it's strong due to its internal structure. Kevlar is strong but light because it's made from layers upon layers of the same molecular chain woven into organic fibers. This defines a polymer. The structure of Kevlar gives it an extremely high hydrogen bond density per unit area. The key to the structure is the organization of the benzene ring, allowing molecular chains to form into organized patterns. The hydrogen bonds located between these benzene rings are difficult to break and even more difficult to break all of them at once. A high tensile strength, lightweight, and non-metal properties makes Kevlar a highly desirable material for thermal insulation. It can also be metallized, which allows the sheets to be bonded with a reflective metal to increase its reflectivity. However, it cannot be placed as an outside layer in MLI as it has a high sensitivity to ultraviolet radiation and will degrade when exposed to it for prolonged periods of time. This is a large issue as a spacecraft such as the ISS gets direct exposure to the sun's UV radiation. Mylar is an aluminized polyester film. Aluminum is vaporized inside a vacuum chamber using the, vac the vacuum metallization technique. It then bonds to the mylar as it solidifies and settles in the defects of the polyester. Mylar is made by stress polyethylene tetraphthalate, also known as BOPET, which stands for biaxially oriented polyethylene tetraphthalate. It is used in MLI as a thermal insulator that prevents radiation from getting through the exterior of the spacecraft. Mylar has a high tensile strength, shear strength, elastic modulus, high reflectivity, and the ability to be metallized, which can allow the mylar sheets to be more effective by adding a layer of metal. The strength of mylar comes from the biaxial orientation of the polymer chains that form while mylar is made. In order to prevent the conductive metallized sheets from touching each other and conducting heat into the spacecraft, a material must be placed between the sheets to separate them. Dacron is a polyester fiber that, like mylar, is polyethylene tetraphthalate, but is not biaxially oriented. It comes in a form similar to fabric and also has a high tensile strength, but most importantly, has a low thermal conductivity that allows it to prevent conduction of heat through the other metallized layers of MLI. So we've decided that a metal coated polyamide fabric makes the best material for space insulation. The metals have the desired reflectivity and the fabrics are light, tough, and able to be set into space without breaking. But at this point, you gotta be wondering, how do they make the space blanket? Like, what do they do to take a hunk of aluminum and a sheet of synthetic fabric and they make a blanket out of it? Um, and so the way they do this is a family of processes collectively known as physical vapor deposition. And all of the processes used, they result in a substrate being coated in a very thin metallic film. The most common by far of these processes, and therefore the one I'm actually going to talk about, is called evaporative deposition, also known as vacuum metallizing. 
So in evaporative deposition, you start by applying a base coat or primer to your substrate of um, uh, synthetic fabric. And this helps promote adhesion of your metal and it provides a better surface for deposition onto. So then you take the substrate and you put it in a vacuum chamber. Um, basically just a giant metal dome that you suck all the air out of. Um, and in this vacuum chamber you put it on top of a small metal filament that's connected to a cathode and anode. When you then run a very high electric current through this filament, the metal actually vaporizes and it goes into the top of your vacuum chamber and then slowly, when, as it cools, deposits itself on the surface of your substrate. And by doing this, you can get a layer on the order of thickness on the order of 1,000 angstroms. Um, this makes it so you get the reflective properties of the metal but you still have your mechanical properties and, in a lot of ways, the weight of your substrate. So once you have your luminized fabric, you have to then put everything together in layers to make your multi-layer insulation. So when you do that, you alternate each layer of metallic coated substance with a separator material. Um, this is usually something very loosely woven, something very light, and this ensures the layers do not touch, so you do not have any um, thermal conduction through the MLI, it's everything is a radiative mode. You also then have to sew the edges of this fabric together to keep all the layers in place, keep everything from sliding around. And then you also need to choose which fabric you're going to put where to optimize the chemical and physical properties of your material. Um, when you finally do have everything together, that is, it is then wrapped around the outer surface of the spacecraft. And they poke little holes all through every layer to ensure that the air that's trapped in the material when it is built can escape when it gets out of atmosphere in the, in the space. Keeps it from really becoming a giant space balloon. So in the end, this entire process of you pick properties um, that you need to have to keep yourself from freezing in space, and you then you find something that has these properties, then you find a way to make this material that ha make this material, is yet another example of the MSE triangle. Um, because, of course, it's you have you set up your requirements and then you find a structure that has the requirements and then you process it to get the requirements, but then that processing gets you the properties you need. And it just all goes around in a giant circle or a giant triangle. So that is all we have for you today. Um, thank you so much for watching our video, and I hope you learned a lot about multilayer insulation used in spacecraft.